good in the house? I am ready for sure. Okay, who is that one said they're ready for sure? Chef Pisa. Okay, Pisa, I know. You've got to be in the A group, so that's fine. I'm loving it. <laughs> that's how we roll. Okay, I love it. <laughs> well, welcome to everyone, those of you who are joining us on this, the seventh day of our 12 Days Caribbean Festival cook of Cooking. And um, this, I think, is the eighth episode. And uh, we still have a few more to go. But... Um, but nonetheless, I want to thank the team, all right? Uh, of course, um, Dereed and Kelly, the team of TAC, uh, for really bringing this opportunity together for all our Caribbean chefs. Definitely want to do that. And I want to thank our fabulous chefs this afternoon for being here. My name is Kay Joyce Henry, and I am going to be your fantastic host. Now, I hail from the beautiful island of Antigua and Barbuda, of course, but currently resides beyond uh, someplace else. I don't even want to say. <laughs> okay, but we are happy. We are so happy to have our um, famous, world famous chefs with us this afternoon. And um, it, this is our All Come All Ye Foodies. And I am in that business, so I know what it is like to say, hey, come, let's go eat. Uh, I'm always down for that. <laughs> we got some music. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. It's truly the Caribbean. Oh, like they like to say the Caribbean. All right. Um, this evening is all about our Caribbean chefs, right? And their culinary skills. They are going to highlight a couple of things as it relates to Christmas in the Caribbean. So um, I got two fabulous chefs with me this evening. And um, I am not going to delay any longer. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. And of course, what they are going to prepare. But I'll let you all know, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're sticking in the A and the B. We're not going any further than that. It's Antigua, Barbuda, Belize. So we're right up in the top of the alphabet and we won't go any further down. That's where we are, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce, starting with our very own Chef Visa from the beautiful Mama. island of Antigua. Go right ahead, Chef. Hi, good day. Good uh, evening. My name is Chef Roderick Pisa. I'm at the beautiful resort of Curtin Duff. Today I'll be doing my grandmother's. Uh, actually, I hail from the island of Barbuda, but you know, I went away to her school now, back home working at the Curtin Duff. So today I'm going to do my grandmother's corn dumpling. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to serve it with two cups. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my version of our cactus. We call it cassie. Mm -hmm. This is just uh, how it looks. Um, salsa. Okay. And later on, and, you know, I'll be infusing all, all of this with some uh, Cavalier, Antigua Cavalier Gold. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Uh, all right. So should I go ahead or do you want? No, I'm, I'm going to gonna get, get into the, the B section right now, and then I'm going to come right back to you. So let's go ahead and introduce Chef Sean from the island of Belize. Are we good to go? Belize, we ready? You hear me? Uh, okay, yes, I'm hearing can you, hear you me? now. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 you got it. Yes, can you hear me? I'm not hearing that. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, okay, yes, I'm hearing you now. All right, we got a feedback, but we can hear you. Joyce, I think they have two systems on, so there's a there's a feedback. So they need to mute one. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Chef Sean, I, the two systems that you have, you'll need to mute one of them or at least turn the volume down because we do have a, a feedback go, coming through. Turn that vol, one of them, the volume completely off. Well, you're still going to get it to the Okay. All right. Speak. Well, how do you speak, my cousin? We're just trying to get um, technical difficulty. I can't hear. Uh, I could okay. See All right. I so, um, since we, uh, we, let me know when you can hear us and um, we definitely can get you going. Uh, technical diff difficulties, we have a couple of oceans of water that's between us all, so we can definitely understand that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask... Um, Oh no, that that is a big delay right there. Uh, I'm gonna ask our oh, chef Visa. Visa, you can um, definitely begin while uh, Sean get his um, system set up there in in Belize. No problem. So okay, what, for the sake of time, a lot of stuff was pre pre done. A lot of prep was done, but okay, I okay good. Uh, I brought my dad's meal all the way from Barbuda. I'm just going to give us a slight demo of how we actually grind the corn, you know, manually. This is some corn oh. kernel. Okay, then, let's get the, let's get a close up on that. And then manually, you know, because nowadays you have a blender and all that, but this is how it was done. I used to do this with my grandmother every year around Christmas time, grind a lot of corn and she would give it to all of her kids and stuff like that to make the pot dumpling. So this is how you do it. We are the noise. Oh yeah. So how how fine um how, how fine is it in uh, at the final process? Did you see that one? I uh, I did, but how fine do you get it? It's like if you put it in a blender. So I I bring it up. I give you a close. Perfect. Perfect. How it actually, uh, how fine it is. Okay, great. So it's like um you know real fine. Can you see that? Yes. So with this now, what we will do, um, this is just like maybe one corn kernel, and we'll grind like maybe like four, five, six um, of the fresh corn. Mm -hmm. And then in this, you'll add your cornmeal, your flour, a little bit of butter, a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, um, some, a little bit of baking powder. And then you, you, know, you have your water boiling. And then once you water it, that, you, know, you add a little bit of salt to it. So this would actually be uh, how, how it looks. But what I did, I kind of made like a little indent inside because I want to serve the, the conks um, stew inside. So I made a little indent the, into the dumpling. Normally mm -hmm. it's just really flat and all that. So you drop it in your water. All right. Now that, that's so boiling. That, it, it has to go into boiling water. Yes, and a little bit of salt in your water also. So while that is boiling, I'm going to go ahead and do the stew cup. All right. So in the hot, I actually brought a cold pot out. Um, this is uh, we know this. Uh, <laughs> That's great. So, <laughs> that has a lot of memories. Yes, yes. A little bit of oil in your hot pan. Then I'm going to add some peppers, garlic, thyme. Celery and onion. A little bit of bit. All right. Once you get to the conch, um, I am going to switch back over to, to Belize and see if they're ready for us. So let's no, see how no, that conch no. is looking. All right, uh, Biza, uh, Chef Biza, we are going to head back over. Let me try and see how um, Belize is coming with their team while we get back to you. No problem. Okay, sounds good. Joyce, Looks good. Joyce, I'm here, but just oh. this is like. Uh, 
This is Adrian. This is Lisa. Oh, hi, Lisa. Give me one second. Oh, I, let me introduce you. All right, yeah. Um, I'm not on yet. I'm not, my video isn't on, so it's fine. Okay. Right. Uh, Mr. Sean. Hi. No, okay. I now that is clearer. Awesome, awesome. How are you doing? Tell me. Okay. <laughs> so is um, Adrian available? I think she has your intro. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and have your intro, let her run that, and then I'm going to come back to you for your input here. La fiesta de nuestra gente Estaremos celebrando La gente hispana y hermosa Estarán bailando El otro rock aquí en Orange Rock Se está preparando Música alegre y bonita Estará disfrutando Lucio y todos sus niños Orgullo de nuestra raza Alegran a donde vayan Con sabor y alegría second there um visa let's get in with um sean hi okay here we go john what's on what's on your menu for today so if you notice from the video belize is very diverse we have a lot of cultures right so a lot of times we you know we we are we are definitely a caribbean country but we are, we are uh, nestled in what we call it Central America. However, we are, I like to say we are dual citizenship. We have a lot of culture. We have Central America. We have lots and lots and lots of Caribbean. So today I decided, because it's Christmas and you asked me what to do for Christmas, um, when I asked about Belizean cuisine, usually we do a lot of Maya and Mestizo dishes in Belize for Christmas. Okay. The, 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 the diet of the Maya is always a lot of corn. So today I'm going to make a dish called relleno negro with some with a turkey, of course, because it's Christmas. And I'm going to stuff it with some pork. Uh, we're going to make a recado, a black recado, which is uh, intentionally burning tortillas and spices, and you blend it, you, you mill it into a recado, and uh, you stuff the pork into the turkey, and you put it in a wonderful broth, and this soup is black. But oh. it's not it doesn't have that charred taste, it's just a wonderful spicy soup. And also we have, um, again, like the Caribbean, we have a lot of sorrel. And I um, have to cook with some alcohol, so we get to have a lot of Lucifer later in the, in the show, no? <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let you get started with your, um, your putting together of your first dish. Excellent. And you can definitely walk us through that. 
Okay, good. So here I have some tortillas burning. You can see, you no? Know, nice and black fire. And again, just like the other chef is doing it with a mill, we would we would blend this up into a, with a food mill, no? Yeah. You, you see how you other like countries like Jamaica have uh, uh, we, we use a lot of habanero, right? You have um what do you next uh, what do you call the other peppers? A scotch bonnet. Yes, but we have habanero, so we put some habanero and we put some tortillas and we blend it and then it becomes this paste, which is a black paste. So to this paste, then you dissolve it with some water. This is called recado negro, black recado. So what it is, is just burnt tortillas and spices, you know? So, so as much as we are different, we are the same. We are very much the same, one Caribbean. Yes. <laughs> so I have some pork here. I'm gonna dissolve the black recado in the pork. And to that, I have some boiled eggs. So I already have the eggs that we um, boil the eggs, I dice the eggs, I take the yolk, and this is the finished product. This is going to go into the into the turkey, you know? This is called put. Put? How put, do you spell yeah. that? B-U-T. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So this, this you could eat it like this, you could eat it in a taco, in a tortilla, but this is now the filling. It's very much like a French, what you call a galantine, you put it in a bird, you know? Usually you put it in a yard fowl, because the yard fowl could take the heat in the, in the okay. soup, right? Oh, we heard about Yad Fowl last um last Sunday at, at the the first um the the first fall guy ep episode. Fall <laughs> Every fat fall guy is Sunday, you got right now the fall that they hide for where because they're Christmas they come, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so here I have a turkey. I'm gonna take the stuffing, which is the black record or the pork. I'm gonna stuff it inside the cavity. Wow. So every time I do that, I alternate with a piece of yolk and I put the yolk and then it just stuff the cavity, you know. But I want to take a little walk in front there because we have a pot going there. And I want to make this broth. That broth is going, the turkey's going in that broth? Yes, it is going in there, but you have to make the broth flavorful, right? We can't make the broth boring. So no, have, that's have right. Pig trotters, right? For pig foot. So, for pork shank. Wow. So pork bones. So, what I'm going to do is take this water here. I'll put all this in there. If I may stop right there, I got sauce, right? <laughs> oh, God. Wow. <laughs> we're, we're building flavor here, darling. We're building flavor. So I'll take all the bones and put that in there. Now, remember the same recado that I tell you, I'm making a black recado, a paste? Mm -hmm. Let me talk about recado quickly because all the Caribbean have a thing called, you got a thing called ruku. You know ruku? No. Ruku is a, a, a chiote or anato. Oh, okay. Yes, I've heard of it. I used to live in Dominica and I used well, to use this in the yard. Uh, in that's Sydney. right. I use it in Jamaica and they all use it, but in Belize, this is the number one seasoning. This is the number one marinade, especially with the Mayas. Uh huh. So this paste turns into this thing. What you, this is a chiote or anato or ruku or ricardo, all of the same name. <laughs> Spicy, ricardo. pepper. Mm hmm. <laughs> Red Ricardo. Now we're going to do the one black today. Remember with the burnt tortillas I was demonstrating earlier? Black, right. So what I'll do, uh, I will dissolve this in water and put it in the same. Remember I have the pig foot in there. Mm -hmm. have the bones. Mm -hmm. And then it's getting nice. And then I put this, this has scotch bonnet and all of that, right? Of course we call it a banero. And Are then, you saying you can, you can eat that as it is? Well, we won't eat it like that. We would dissolve it and it becomes a marinade, but Definitely, this dish for Christmas. Day, we oh, eat this okay. Food. This is your Christmas dish. Yeah, like New Year's and stuff. They do eat this a lot. So I have okay. the black ricardo there, and I also show you quickly before you go over to the next chef. So then I have my um, my bird, no? Okay. I'm a turkey. I know you you, you have um in French cuisine they have what they call a foie gras, right? You take that, you yeah. stuff and yeah. it, right? <laughs> Push everything in your fat now, make it get nice and juicy. So I put this black put in the pork, stuff and carrot, and then I will make it swim in the water. Not too long, about we'll 20 minutes, right? I don't want it to cook too much okay. in here. I just oh. want it because it's, it doesn't want to start to broke up, right? <laughs> That's why right. it will cook quickly. 
I'm going to quick. So then from there, I'm going to take it on in, a, in another 45 minutes. And then I'm going to throw it in at this cold pan. You call it barrel drum. I have my charcoal over here, right? And I'm going to roast it. So that is called a Rayo Negro. Oh, wow. Rayo Negro. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. That, that That's a process. Now, on, on average, how long would that take you to... um? To, to do if like you're doing hours. that at the hotel or even at home? At home, it takes like about three hours. It's a lot of labor, very labor intensive things. Like also we have the byproduct of the corn. So here we have a corn, this is called a metate, right? This is a stone. And then corn is very interesting again. We have um, to make what is called masa, which is the, what you make tortilla from. In most countries, even in Mexico, you know, they mm -hmm. use corn masa. Right. Again, very labor intensive. To make corn masa, you would have to take the corn, you don't have to cook it with white lime. And we have a, this is another process. We take the limestone rocks and you create, you, you get a powder. Now this is a, and then you soak the corn in that and then you, you grind it in this, with this, with this rock, no? From there, of course, now we have factories and so that make every culture in the country eats corn tortilla, corn masa. That's that's right. That's right. So it is a, a, a labor intense um, process. So yes. you have to truly love the people that you're you're preparing this for. Yes, darling. When you have a wedding and stuff, people are like about 400, 500. So from this, we have the byproducts of that becomes like tamales. Here I have some tamales, which is the masa stuff with the achiote and some some chicken. You could make salbutes. You could make tostadas. You could make garnachas. These are all byproducts of the corn. You know corn tortilla. Here is interesting, I have a dish called dukuno. Now to you in the Caribbean, you might think you have what you call fungi and, and, and you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you see, but you a use palette. cornmeal. We don't use cornmeal, we use corn masa. Almost okay. the same thing, right? Wrap it in the corn leaf and you have a dish called dukuno. These are like little fungi, they can firm up, it's starchy and it's nice and delicious, delicious, delicious. Okay, so uh, Chef 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 Visa, well, well, that sounds very much like dukuna. Um, dukuna, sweet, pot, sweet potato, right? That's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, right I'm, I'm going to come back to you All right, in, a, in a little bit. Let me right. check on um, uh, Chef Visa and see how we're doing with our conch over here, and um, and also to ensure that um, he hasn't gone too far ahead. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so let's go over. Uh, Biza, Chef Biza, how are we doing here? Uh, actually, the con has already been stewing for at least about 10 minutes now. Okay, so. so you know what? Take me to the process because what we had was up to when you were sort of saut uh, sauteing um, those um, seasonings. Yes. And then you added the conch right after that? Yes, and then after I deglaze it with uh, about maybe like a half a cup of the cavalier rum. Then, okay. I added, then I added the tomato paste, some whole tomatoes. Then I had some vegetable stock. I added the vegetable stock. So now I'm having it reduced on the core part. So the, and also the corn dumpling was finished. So that's um, sitting there waiting for us to finish. So I'm going to do a quick salsa. And the salsa, this is how we have the casting that I showed you earlier. Um, uh -huh. I boiled it earlier. So this is how it looks whole. Diced it up. Washed it in some lemon water. So I'm going to add some tomato. So, Chef, 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 Chef Visa, you, um, while you were actually at um, uh, the, the uh, Lighthouse Bay Resort in Barbuda, um, did you by chance cook for um, Kathy Sledge? I wasn't there when she was there at the time. I, when I came, I, I did like my externship there. She came okay. after. Yes, okay, yes. Okay, I, okay. I heard, you, you, you had moved on to, to larger pastures by then. Yes, yes, very much. <laughs> okay, that's great. Now, I, I do have um, one of Kathy's advisor on with me, uh, Lisa oh, Harper. Lisa, Lovely. are you there? Yes, Joyce. Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much. This is like so much fun. <laughs> All right, but he works at the lighthouse on Barbuda, and and, and Kathy has, uh, had also visited that um that resort. Yeah. So um I, I don't. If you have any any questions you'd like to ask um Chef Visa about uh, what he's actually doing? I know you do have a copy of, of his recipe today. Yeah, but no, but I love um I didn't realize that cactus um 
would be used um, and um, on the island of Barbuda. And so um, I love cactus. I mean, it's not something that we even get here in the United States often. It's um, often uh, done in the uh, Southwest of the United States uh, in like Arizona. So that's when I've had it before. So I wish I was there with you so I could taste that cactus salsa. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so I already put the salsa together here. You have tomatoes, some lemon juice, um, a little bit of olive oil, cilantro, a little bit of garlic. So normally around Christmas time, rather than having turkey and all that, when I was a child coming up, we would have a stew comes con dumpling. And I'm just doing a, a, a version of what we call you know, normally stew the, um, the cactus. I'm just doing a salsa instead, kind of to top off what I'm doing here today. So I can, my dish is pretty much already done. Do you want me to go ahead and play it up or do you want to come back to me later? Uh, yeah, I definitely would want to come back to you. Um, uh, let's not play it up as yet. Um, I, I know you can turn that down and get that a little lower. We're just a little delayed behind um, Belize, but I think um, we can uh, move over to, um, to Chef Sean. And I, I know Lisa, you guys have gone to Belize as well. Um, what? What did you, what were your impressions of, of the food there? I have not visited yet. I, I look forward to that in the not too distant future. Yes, absolutely, Joyce. Well, Belize was um, actually interesting and I was trying to think of the resort that we um, stayed at. Uh, it'll come to me before I finish talking. Um, but uh, the cuisine in Belize was, um, very delicious and um, I just remember it just always being bountiful uh, just as the chef has been describing uh, it was always like uh, uh, a banquet or a buffet <laughs> <laughs> oh wow okay so ladies and gentlemen we are actually um, witnessing uh, Chef Biza and he is actually based at the Curtain Bluff Hotel in Antigua and um, he'll have a little chance to give you his handles where you can reach him if you would like to actually do some of um, what he's, he's preparing for your Christmas table. And also um, uh, Chef Sean, who is um, at the resort in uh, Belize. I need to get which one of those resorts that he's at. But, um, but I'm gonna go over to that now. Uh, let's take it over to Sean, uh, Chef Sean. Hi. <laughs> okay. Where are we here? Good. Things happening here. Things happening. So you remember the draft of the pink foot, the trappers, and the bone, and the black ricardo? That's right. And then I just wanted to say, because I have to be very careful and meticulous, right? This cavity needed to be stoned up, which I did earlier, with a needle and a chainsaw. That's about labor intensive, no? You have, to, you have to stop it and then you take and you stew it up, you know? What? You want everything to stay inside the bird, right? So, for demonstration purposes, this was the same turkey that I put in here. Okay. And then um, I'm going to use the cold pot over there and I'm just going to wrap it in some planting leaf, no? And then I'm going to put it in the, in the oven and then. Um, Again, this will reduce down to a nice, beautiful broth. Oh. I, I love that oven. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the handle is made of wood? It's actually a barrel, you know how you have Trinidad Castile drum? I, I, I know, I realize that, but the, the handle, is that a wood handle? The handle is made of wood, yes. Okay, okay, because I was hoping I it's, it's, this, um, it's not it's not copper. <laughs> oven is um we make we have Johnny cakes in Belize, you know, we make Johnny cakes, we make powder corn, we make we make sweet potato pudding, we make uh cassava pudding and this thing. Okay. Yeah, stuff like that. Okay. All right, Lisa, any questions for uh Chef Sean today? Uh well I I you know uh this is like great looking at how he's preparing this turkey 
I mean, the boil and then uh, putting it into the smoker. And I love the smoker. I'm going to um, have to steal that idea. I think we make smokers. Uh, I'm from the South. I'm from Louisiana. So much of what you're talking about, of course, we use because uh, Louisiana is a mix of um, so many cultures. And um, we make our own smokers. But I don't know if I've ever seen anyone make it um, out of a barrel. So I love it. <laughs> That's right. Um, that you know, based on what um, Chef Visa was doing with the coal pot, and then also um, Chef, Chef Sean, I said that a little earlier. As much as we are different on different islands, we are still so much the same because it's just a matter of how back then you talk about the Myers and that's how they cook and we have brought that forward and we talk about um, history in Antigua it was about the coal pot and getting um, some stuff underneath what we call the arch or roasting corn on top of uh, that coal pot so there's so many similarities um, in terms of the the methods in which you you both uh, are cooking all right um, now as it relates to um, Chef Sean, uh, what's the name of your property and, um, and what are your handles? Well, I know you come well um, uh, from the top of the, 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 the cream of the crop and uh, you are a celebrity chef in your own right. It's hurting. It's hurting my head. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't work at any resort. I, I have a catering company. I work for myself and I do uh, what I say. I sell culture, right? So destination wedding, whenever you want to come to the country. And um, depending, because like I said, we have a lot of cultures. Speaking of the Mayas, I can't just say this is a dish of the Mayas because we have three types of Mayas in the East. So we have the Yucatec Maya, the Kechi Maya, Maya Mopan, which means that there are three different languages, three different types of food. So this one is a Maya Yucatec food. So the, this is in the northern Belize. If you go in southern Belize, we have a totally different uh, cuisine, language, way of life. The only thing that will remain the same would be the corn, you know. And then we have a, my favorite cuisine and culture is the Garifuna. You know, the Garifuna is very much Caribbean and brought a lot of influence to us from, these are uh, uh, descendants from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mm -hmm. So the Kalinagu, and the Carib and the Arawak Indians, and then they were exiled off the island in the 1800s and they came to the East Honduras and they brought their culture. Look at this, for example. This is, the, the, uh, you know, in Bar 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 uh, Bahamas, you have Jankuno. Mm -hmm. We have Jankuno in Belize, the Garifuna do Jankuno, especially <laughs> yeah, for well, Christmas. No, the Garifuna eat a lot of cassava, grown food. Uh, did you notice this mortar pestle in front of you with plantains in it? That's a totally different cuisine, but you see, you tell me, you only could do one in 30 minutes because I mean, I think you all 12 years you could do one cuisine of cuisine. Right? We, we can appreciate you, you being time cons, putting that time into use. Yeah, so the Caribbean eat a lot of coconut, coconut milk, seafood. Again, we have, we have the, 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 the market at Belize, in Belize, would be like, if you close your eyes, you landed there, you wouldn't even know which country you would be in because we have Chocho, Christophine, Tanya, Edo's. Uh, yam, beef, yam, sorrel, of course. And I want to talk about sorrel because I see, ah, they should the make sorrel because sorrel is for Christmas, right? Of course. But guess what happened in Belize? We have a Belican brewing company and they're going to make a stout out of it, man. Sorrel stout. You can't go wrong. Okay, so how can we get a hold of one of those? So you have to come to Belize. That's the point of this, right? It's because it's Chevalier selling the Caribbean and the only got one we've tried, darling. You have to come to me, man. Okay, so you uh, traveling has to sell in the Caribbean. We're gonna make sure that we um we contact them and and, and have them get some bottles over here for us. Yes. All right, and now what's the um the time frame on your um your room or the the yes. of, of the turkey? Yes. So what happened is that I um of course for time because this is gonna take like four hours. I already missed another one. Really. Okay, this I can understand that. This is a finished product already. Uh -huh. This one has been for at least four hours. Now to this, we had to add some seasoning, right? We had to add some garlic. 
I'd have some, some, some habanero because we want it spicy. I'd add some cloves. As a matter of fact, I went to the market and I found some thyme, uh, so oregano. I know you use this a lot in your cooking. You put yes. thyme, we put, we call it scallion, you know, or, or onion. We put a little bit of cloves, oregano, uh, and epasote. Number one uh, item for this dish is epasote. I don't know if okay. you have a name for it. All right, so Sean, what 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 would you say um, is that one ingredient or maybe a spice that would um, serenade your kitchen at this time of the year uh, that really brings it home home to you that it is Christmas? And then I'm gonna go over to um, to Biza. Yeah, well, in uh, I'm doing a culture, and this is a culture that we eat this for Christmas. So that's, guess, that's right. Our homes would have a lot of hams and Christmas ham with glazes. We put the turtle glaze, the pineapple glaze, the orange glaze. Again, we use a lot of rums. Remember, we have a lot of, we have citrus, we have sugar cane. We, we have about four different companies that they go to the country. Um, just the smell of tamales, I would say. Because okay. when you plant in leaf and you put it over fire, you know that smell? Yes. yes. That's like every Belizean smell that they have connotation of home, right? <laughs> so things like that would be. And of course, anato, which is number one spice. So, so right now, and I heard this on, 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 on Sunday, uh, I, I wish we had a smell of vision right now. <laughs> and it, it's or or taste the food. vision. Remember the, the, the turkeys in the oven. And I, when you come back again, too, I'm going to make a beverage out of some corn again, because the theme of today is corn. So okay. I'm making corn masa, the tortilla, the recado. We're going to make a corn atole, and I'll spike it with some rum later on. Okay, well, how amazing it is that both of our chefs today um, are using corn as one of their main um, ingredients. And yes. it, it just speaks to volume to, to what and who we are as um, in terms of our, our cooking uh, in the Caribbean. And um, of course, we also have um, Chef Visa. There's um, we had someone who was commenting that they stayed at the Curtin Bluff Hotel. Now that's one of our top resorts in and in Antigua. One of the top resorts in Antigua. Um, it's on the lush side of the island, which is um, the southern side. And um, you know, I'm gonna bring uh, Visa back, Chef Visa back in so that he yes. can tell us a little bit about what are some of the must have um, at that resort for this time of year when we are looking to um, celebrate the uh, Christmas. Oh, for this time of year, we have like a very good spread around for lunch. Uh, we, do our, we do all the traditions. We do the turkey, the ham. We do a little twist on it, you know, with our international chef and all of our chefs. So we have your ham, your turkey, we do um, goat water, stew conks, um, we have our barbecue day on Wednesdays, you know, we, we used to have like a whole roasted pig and all that, but I think once yeah, we'll be picking up that from maybe from next week. So we're, we're, we're very much um, into the holiday spirit right now. Oh, great. Um, so what, what type of, uh, the same question that I asked uh, Chef Sean, what type of flavor or, or smell would you say serenade the corridors of, um, of Curtain Bluff at this time of year? It, it's a must. Oh, we have so much, man. There's so much going on right now. You have for breakfast, you have all the traditional trimmings. Then for dinner, you have, you know, for lunch, you know, because we had to move away from all the buffets. So we're doing everything a la carte, but yet still we make it very interesting in terms of our flair and what we bring to the table. So it's more of the, the regular traditions. And then you have like your conch water, your, your, bullet, your, um, your, your seafood bullet, bullet like we'll bring out, we're going to bring out our big walk and we're going to be doing that uh, pro probably from the next two weeks. So you have all these ceremonies of seafood. I think that's what we're known for a lot. Fresh oh. seafood, mahi mahi, lobster, yeah. conch, yeah. Um, red snapper, tuna. We just got a big one yesterday. Wow. So right now, as I'm here at one end of the property, the chef is up there, I'm sure, probably breaking it down for dinner. Oh, I'm wow. just here roasting the corn to burn time because, you know, I can't yeah, afford I, to I see thing. that, and you're, you're, you're tickling my taste buds right now. I, I definitely could do well with that corn. Uh, but I see your, your culinary journey started in your grandmother's kitchen. Yes, yes, very much so. I used to, and this time of the year, I, she would call, um, call upon me 
um, to come over and show you because, you know, in Barbuda, this time we have abundance of corn. And uh, we did so much with the corn. Dumpling was like a tradition around Christmas time. Um, you know, you'll, you, like the meal that I showed earlier, I mean, I was spend like hours just grinding like loads of it. Then she would add all of her spices or seasoning and then what she would do, then she would distribute it to all of her kids. And, you know, but it starts with mill, you know, grinding the corn and that was very tedious. But I mean, she helped made me, made me who I am today as a chef, you know, those early fundamentals of cooking and flavor. She was very good with flavors. Uh, and I, I like your, your statement, your last statement on that, which you said, you must cook with love. Right? Yes, right? yes, yes. It is a must, right? Very much, very much. <laughs> now, what would you say is a, a, a drink that would go well throughout the season? Um, uh, I know you use the rum in, in the conch, but what what is a good drink that would go throughout the season? Sorry. The sorrow, Sorry. but would you spice yes, yes. this up a bit? Yes, yes, the cinnamon, all that. That's one of the things that we're actually getting ready to, um, because our guests, they love that. The sorrel, and you also uh -huh. go uh, a nice ginger beer. And our guests, they love those kind of things every year around this time. Yes. No, we, we can't go wrong with sorrel. Not at this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact. Okay. Um, all right. So we are, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, of course, um, you can do so in the chat and um, we are live on Facebook. Uh, we want to thank um, Tex. Uh, we have the travel advice we sell in the Caribbean, um, 12 days cooking festival, right? Uh, I want to actually big up our, um, our DJ, DJ Sniper. I don't, I think he's still on. Um, we can, uh, oh wow, that looks so good. We want to um, we want to make sure that we give him kudos, and uh, if he is on, we can have a little Caribbean flavor of our Christmas, and uh, and then we're gonna take it back over to Chef Sean, where he's gonna give us a a, a roundup of what he has, and then we will we will sort of plate up. Now I want everybody to get their their glass and for the the end of this session celebration as we're gonna do our toast. But um, Chef Sean should be getting his drink um, ready if uh, our uh, DJ is available. DJ, are you there? DJ had to leave. Oh, he did. Oh, oh, great. Okay, okay. Well, not great at all, but we understand. So that means um, you're in charge to read. Lisa, you you, <laughs> you have anything? Good morning, Lisa. <laughs> you have uh, any questions for either of our um, world famous uh, chef this afternoon? Uh, no questions, just comments. Wish okay, I were there. Ahead. I wish I were there. And I love um, what uh, Chef Sean, I believe, was saying about uh, cooking in the kitchen with his grandmother and that it all comes from love and you have to chef, start with chef love. Visa. Oh, Chef Fiza, thank yeah. you, sorry, yes. So Chef Fiza, that is the first ingredient in all cooking, love. Yes, very much, love, That's love. right, that's right. <laughs> okay, all right, let's take it back. It is, it is, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. it is. You cook with love and the food goes in no time. Uh, uh, one, one, one of the things she instilled early, Never cook with a metal spoon in a metal pot. Wooden spoon in a metal pot. You know, because you don't hear that. That's love right there. Cooking with a wooden spoon. I would get my ears pulled for that metal spoon. I'll say something, but I'll leave that to the chefs. I, I only try to practice cooking. Not not, chef, not the culinary skills are not my thing. Um, Joyce, okay. I have a question. I have a question for Chef Beezer. Okay. Chef Beezer, I know you grew up in Barbuda. Yes, ma'am. Very, very few people know anything about Barbuda. You know, um, tell us about life on Barbuda, especially the food. I know there's a lot of conch, a lot of yes. lobster, a lot of deer. Um, tell us about the food in Barbuda. I mean, for me personally, I love Barbuda. I love the oh, people. Yeah. But oh, the yes. food, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, the food. <laughs> tell us about, you know, gathering the food. In Barbuda, especially at Christmas, what that was like? Uh, it's it's strictly based on seafood. You wouldn't really find a tradition ham. Well, you have the ham, you know, and for breakfast, but like your turkey and all that. That's not what we're known for. You will have your lobster, like what I did today with the conch. 
Some people do the stew lobster. I mean, pretty much the same process. But it, it was like fresh food every day. A pot was cooking every day. We don't believe in storing food food in the fridge for days, not like that. Every day, a fresh pot. And that's what I love, fresh food. You know, you didn't really have this, uh, you know, weeks of, you know, preparing stuff. It was cook today, eat today, and then you cook a fresh pot tomorrow. And that's what I love about home. And I can remember, even from my grandmother, now, as a child, <laughs> I used to leave school, go by her, you know, in her kitchen, have her food, and then I would still go home and eat home at my parents. So like, that's why I was a little bit chubby when I was a kid. But, you know, as I got older, I kind of did a lot of exercise. So I kind of, you know, but I used to love that. Two house hopping. Her home, eat there. Then I go home and I eat there also. I love food when I was a kid. All right. So you, you have also um, someone asking about deer meat on Barbuda. Yes, 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 yes. That was one of our staples also around this time too. Um, but it's, it's very gamey. So, you know, it, we had to do a lot of, you know, with vinegar and all that. But once you hear that cooking in your house, you can smell that from your neighbor's yard, man. That there was very, you know, very gamey. But it's something that we, you know, you, you get it done properly. A nice stew, normally stew. And um, you serve that with some fungi, some boiled dumpling, and all that good stuff. Again, fresh pot every day. Oh, right. Oh, wow. F dumpling. Whoa. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. All right. Um... And, and then there's also another question as to um, how do you make the conch uh, tender and not chewy? Oh, that's like, we have like what you call back then, you would, you, well, we, you, we would use a hammer. But, you know, as a professional chef, you use what's called a mallet. You kind of tenderize it a bit. Then you put it in your pot, you know, with all your um, thyme and your celery. And then a little, the secret was a little bit of baking powder. That was used as a tenderizer to, to make it cook fa a little bit faster but also very tender. Baking powder was a secret ingredient when we used to cook our conks back home. A little bit, not too much. Okay, all right, sounds good. All right, so while you, just before, you're gonna plate now, but then you you have a drink that you said you were gonna um, set up? No, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing the salad today. I was only oh, saying Oh, you're not doing the salad today? No, okay. no, no, all right. So Maybe later on and, uh, next time. I'm not doing the salad. Okay. I haven't had it yet for the season. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to get back to you um, on plating your, your meal, and I'm going to get over to the Bellies team, which is, of course, headed by uh, Chef Sean. How are we going with that amazing uh, turkey and all that stuff? Excellent, excellent. The turkey is getting happy in the oven. The soup is simmering. It's beautiful. It's getting more concentrated. The flavors. It's actually tastes nicer than the other day because it's just you know, it's chicken there. So the soup is okay. going to play that in a minute, but I wanted to make a beverage. Yeah. A rum beverage, no? So That's right. The theme of today is corn. So we have the corn masa. Now, you take the masa, you put it in some water, and you dissolve it, and you cook it over the stove. And you have, a, you have something called atole. Corn atole. A no, tole. A tole, yeah. I could sweeten it with a little bit. You know, everybody in the Caribbean will put condensed milk. A little bit of condensed milk. <laughs> that looks good take, already. Yeah, so you take the corn, you dissolve it, you sweeten it, you can put milk condensed, you put coconut milk if you want. And then I will cook it over the stove, you know, I will strain it, and then I cook it over the stove. Now, from that, I will have this, like a porridge, right? This is a little uh, thick, but you, would, you could drink this warm, you know, it was spicy, nutmeg, cinnamon. So, if I were to take rice, I could take rice, soaked rice, uh -huh. blend it up, you have a dish called horchata, sweetened with condensed milk, same thing. Right, right. So from, from rice, I could make a drink called horchata. From the corn, I could make a drink called atole. Remember, I tell you, we have the garifuna culture in Belize. This is, this is choloma. Or cassava starch. Okay. The yeah, yeah. is called darara. That's a If I do the same process again, water, condensed milk, then you have a dish called saho. So garifuna, saho, corn maya atole, or chata with rice, no? All Belizean cuisine, all very flavorful. Anyway, so I took some pumpkin seed, we call it pepito seed. They say, you know, when your when you lady left you and you start to bite your fingernail and you sit down home, they, they, they call that macobin disease. So when you say a man start to eat this all day, the guy has problems at home. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we take some toasted Macobi seed, pepito seed, some sesame seed. This is a calabaza, a little bit of pumpkin. And I'm sending this, sending this over to Gilbert. He's in the back here. We're gonna do the concoction with the, with the alcohol. And then when I come back, we're gonna put some people run rum. And we're gonna have like a colada, right? Is is this a um a, a, a traditional uh, Christmas uh Christmas well, drink? It's not traditional. Uh, the drink is traditional, but the, the application today is not traditional. Okay. This is so we have again the Tiburon rum. You know, like most Caribbean country, we have beautiful rums in Belize. We have white rum, dark rum, beige rum. What so what's the rum. name? What's the name of that rum? This is called Tiburon. Tiburon in English is shark. Like shark, yeah, the shark, eat the back. <laughs> <laughs> it, it <laughs> now here we have the wonderful drink, the man. Again, the same corn, just like the chef is making his roasted corn. I have some cinnamon sticks roasting on the, the fire heart. And this is a corn atole. And also we put some uh, coconut cream in this. So imagine you're making a pina colada, but you subtract the pina, yeah? you subtract uh -huh. the pineapple, uh -huh. and you replace it with atole. And this is a wonderful corn atole with tiburon rum. Tiburon rum. Oh. Wow. That's a, that looks up, like a really good drink right now. I know what it looks, darling. I know it's fierce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we have the turkey. Right? We put it wow. Nice and brown and gorgeous now. Wrap it in some planting leaves. Actually, the plantain leaf technique is very popular in the Maya cuisine. They have a dish called pibil. And if you take pork, right? Because everybody loves pork, a whole hog, and you rub it with some red recado, which is the achiote, the red ruku. Uh -huh. You put that under the ground, you have a dish called pibil. But because it's Christmas, we do it with turkey, right? So I'm going to take this turkey now, I'm going to carve it, I'm going to get some of it. Remember the pork that we put inside? And we're going to plate up this turkey dish, reino negro. No. <laughs> Yeah. So that is it, uh, how it would normally look in it, in its uh, at the end of your um your your cooking, yes. or the end of the roasting. Yes, it's, it's gorgeous here. This is um again remember traditionally traditionally they would use uh -huh. it coal, so that could stay in the fire and cook 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 forever and it never break apart because it's firm. So you know when the chicken they run wrong, you build muscles, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have the turkey here. I'm just gonna slice it, put it in a plate. Now this is eaten with corn tortillas, popcorn tortillas. And again, traditional for fast food and weddings. A lot of weddings, you'll, you'll find that the, up in the Mestizo culture, they eat uh, reino negro. Now there's a white version of this, right? In oh. of black ricotta, you could put some spices, uh, they put raisins and capers and saffron, and then you have a version called white, record, white rain. Yeah. So th this is generally served as um, as a full meal, or it's served along with other. Um... This is a full meal, darling. Look at the, okay. the remember the uh, the egg yolk that I put in there. I don't know if you can see, but here I have the yolk. It's just a wonderful like layers of. Beautiful when the pork because the pork I put some eggs, some raw eggs for binder, mm -hmm. and it just captured everything. And when you slice it, you get a piece of the yolk inside, the blackness. And then I put the broth, and again you serve this with some warm tortillas. Let me go get some broth, man, because I'm hungry. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> now I'm telling you, I'm sure some uh, travel agents will be be calling to find out when you you will be able to have. Um, have this done for them, or somebody might be tapping in to get the recipe on this. And the best place to get this is in a village. Well, I'm going to bring a private group and and have an Airbnb and just have chef there the whole time. Yes. There you go. Wow. Beautiful. This, Delicious. This one I seen a nice resort with TNT and five star and white table. That this nice one when they do you know the outdoors yes. village when they smoke the dead eggs, it's fog and everything. And then I wait, man, look at this of turkey. I'm like, you're not finished yet. Yeah. <laughs> right? Put some turkey on it too. Oh, wow. And there you have it. You have this one, is the black ricardo. You have the white rain. You have a different, a different version called chirmole. Chirmole mm -hmm. is, if I didn't take this and stuff it in the cabbage of the bird, that would be called chirmole. 
Okay. We have an onion one called escabeche, like Jamaican has escobich. We have yeah, yeah. one cooked with a lot of vinegar and sour in the mm -hmm. lime and goodness and a lot of love. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, whoa. Okay, so I'm going to head back over to head over to Antigua to um, Chef Biza and yes. um, let's get him to plate his um, his meal, his, his food item. And um, at the same time, he's going to tell us what is really a good drink to go along with this particular meal. As a local drink or a wine, or I think let's the sorrel. Let's go, let's go local. Let's go local. Yeah, the, the sorrel, the sorrel hint of ginger goes very well with this because um, the conch is a little bit, you know, high in terms of flavor wise, you know, very uh -huh. strong. Yes. A nice sorrel, even a nice lemonade because of the, you know, nice cleanser for the palate, especially uh -huh. the lemonade. Yes. Okay. Okay. So here we have our stew conch. It's all nice, been here mellowing since we've been talking. So I'm just gonna add a little bit into my indented corn dumpling. How long did the corn dumpling take to, to actually cook? About 15 minutes, um, once you drop it in, once uh -huh. it starts to float, that's when you know it's actually done. Okay, um, yes. that contains baking powder or baking soda? Yes, a little, okay. a little bit of baking powder. Like uh, my recipe was like four ears of corn. Uh, maybe like I have the recipe. I'll be um, I shared it already with um. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we'll have to get that to to others. Yeah. And this is our my uh, my cactus salsa, cactus tomato, wow. red onion, oh, cilantro, so a little bit of lime juice, and I'll top just a little bit of this on top of our conch. Mm. And then to garnish, a little bit of our microgreens grown locally here in Antigua. Oh, oh, very good. Yes, island microgreens locally. And then we just do a little bit of olive oil to top it. And that's it. Corn dumplings, stew conks, cactus salsa, a little bit of microgreens to garnish. So, chefs, we're going to need some really good close-up pictures for, um, for our Facebook and also for our... Um, YouTube channel, so we, we definitely want to make sure that you get a close up on the camera uh, for the video and then some really good stills. That right? is delicious. Oh, it looks so good. Oh. I'll be having this for my breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> all right, we, we, we want to uh, uh, taste the vision, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great, Chef Pizza. Okay. Thank you. We'll no, no, no. <laughs> okay, hold it right there. Okay, um, Chef Sean, hey. how is the final on your um your plate? Oh, what else do you have sharing with us? Well, everything is good here. No, I understand that the the broth is um quite spicy. It is spicy. It is spicy. We need a lot of habanero. And remember, it's blended in there and it's it's spicy. But it, it, it burns you good, man. And a good kind of burns you like. You know, to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so so with with the group that is coming down for an Airbnb, um, we, we so, have to know about the spices. Of course, of course, we can cater. And that's that's a good question, you know. Um, you tell me, and especially with me, I, I do catering and that's exactly, I could theater that to you. The only thing I can't make for you is a vegetarian version of this. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm making a joke, but you know, let me tell you something about when, when people travel and you have a lot of travelers, you know, they come with a lot of allergies now. They want gluten-free diet. They have a celiac disease. But this cuisine, the Maya, for example, the corn, no flour, no gluten, coconut milk. If you want, if I go in the Garifuna cuisine, no, you can't eat. You have a lactose intolerance. I will make many, many dishes for you. Lactose intolerant, lactose free, sorry. Because I, I make a broth with coconut and that's a whole nother culture, right? But the tortilla, think about it. Mm -hmm. it's no, I mean, when you have a lot of people traveling and stuff, that's my, I, I will tailor to you. So the spice, I will, I will reduce it for you. Don't you know, worry about nothing more. Wow. I, I, we, I really, I'm, I'm looking forward to being a part of, um, that group that is coming over because you're definitely going to be hearing from us. Um, 
Is is there a um a, a handle to you, where we can locate you? What's your um Facebook or Instagram? I'm very active. Chef Sean Quillen. Instagram. Okay. Sean Quillen Facebook. All yeah. right. And Great. again, I um again so just like other countries, the soil. We have a version too. We call it Jamaica. Actually, Jamaica is spelled like the word Jamaica, but the J is silent, right? Uh -huh. so we, make, we make beverages and stuff. But the people at Belikin, they just, I, I can't get a bit, I can't think of a better way to make sorrel. Just, this is a seasonal just for the Christmas. This is a sorrel stout. I mean, stout already delicious to me. I love stout already. Yeah? And then you put sorrel <laughs> in there. But again, if you're coming Christmas, you're gonna get sorrel stout. If you're coming March, we have a chocolate festival to get a chocolate stout. I mean, mm. we have, we have, remember, we're not talking about chocolate yet with the Mayas and the Mestizo. Yeah. Seafood, we're not talking about conch yet, like the we have the, again, everybody know about the blue hole, the second largest barrier in the world. Seafood is out, again, we don't play with that yet. So again, I'm very happy to showcase the culture of the Maya Mestizo because it's a Christmas fish, but it's very extensive. Again, tamales here. Dukuno, you, you talk about Dukuna, we talk about sweet potato. We have a way we wrap it just like the Dukuna. Uh -huh. like, like Kanki, right? Kanki. Mm -hmm. We take cassava, we grape cassava, sugar, coconut milk, wrap it in a plantain leaf, and we call that Dani. No, Dani is just like Kanki, but a cassava version of it, right? Okay, so 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 Kanki is the woman and Dani is the man. Look so darling. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Um, cuisine is just wonderful. I love it. And a lot of times I want to say that, you know, we are very much Caribbean. We are Caribbean. All the elements. But it's just a Caribbean with a Libra tamore. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's Belize for you. You have to come, you have to come and tell me about that. We, we definitely will. I, I like to see the, the, the part up front here and that this whole um, set up, you know, the, the drum and... and, and all that good stuff right there. Um, yes. Sh Chef Visa, let me yes. get on to you for one, um, well, not the last, but a second. There's a question about um, from the ocean to the dumpling. What's the process on the conch? The conch, oh, it's um, it's harvest in shell. So what you have to dive it um, pretty much. Um, there's, it's a season, it's seasonal. I think this, I don't want to butcher the season, but it's very seasonal because we want to preserve it so, so you don't, it's not over harvested. So you have to dive it, then after you got to take it from the shell, and that's the process. The fishermen normally, you know, do it at a very, various part of the island, and they store all the shells there, and sometimes people will go there and harvest the shells, clean them up. When I was in the BVI, there was one guy who I know, a cousin of mine, who used to make like a horn from the conch shell. And I think I've never seen it being done in Antigua. I think that's maybe something we should, you know, maybe go into. It's, it makes a real nice sound around. Uh, you can use it at cricket. I think it's been done, but I'm not, I haven't heard it lately. And then after you have it, you clean it, you take away the baba. The baba is what you use for fishing. And I used to use that when I was a kid to go fishing. And then after you, you know, you clean it with, I think some people use vinegar and lime, lime to get the slime off. And mm -hmm. That's when you pound it. And then after you boil it, as I mentioned, for it takes a while to cook, but the secret is a little bit of baking powder, and that will help to tenderize it. Okay, all right. Okay, I got you. I got we we, we got that question fully answered. Fully answered. Um, this this looks so good. I mean, it's it's beyond what um, you know most people would would think of when you're talking about kunk and dumpling. You know. Yes. Uh, yes. De definitely. <laughs> It, it, it looks really, really, really um, fantastic. And I mean, like a little dent in the dumpling, as I showed earlier, and that kind of kept everything intact, you know, because normally if the dumpling is flat, all the sauce will be rolling off. So I had like oh, a little bowl, oh, like so everything is inside, you know, yes, the dumpling, everything is inside. So once you cut in, I mean, you're getting all that flavor that has already been absorbed into the dumpling. Okay. So Papa, I, I have um, a question. I have a oh, question. Sure. What is the texture of the corn dumpling? Is it like, is it a little denser than fungi? A little bit denser. Um, I, so I made, like I, what, <laughs> it, it looks like fungi, it but I made it a little bit soft because I wanted it pliable. Um, I didn't, because my mom sent some to me that she made at home. 
But and I was like, she already cut them up. And I was like, no, I can't really use it because of what I wanted to do. So I had to go buy some corn yesterday, right here in Antigua, and um, you know, grind it um prior. Because it normally takes a little while, so I couldn't have done it live. It would have probably taken like a whole hour to complete that process alone. Right. But Texas right. very, very it's a little bit firmer than a fungi. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how it. Yeah, it, it definitely. Do you read this right there? Uh, it does have a, a look like the fungi. It looks like you, fungi you, with you know, a jacket. Yeah, yes, how you yes. roll it, how you roll it out, and then you open yes. it up and put the butter in, and you cover it back and yes. all. fungi with a hole. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's so true. Oh my goodness! All right. Um. No, this. It's another question about if there's something else besides the conch that you could do um, with that dish. Again, I mentioned earlier around this time, a lot of people either do the stew cock for Christmas or the stew lobster. Um, because, you know, those are the two seafood harvested a lot around this time home. Because, you know, back then you could get a lobster for maybe like six, five dollars a pound. No, I'm not even sure how much you pay a lobster for. So it's either a stew lobster or stew cock. That was our tradition, along with all the other stuff that, you know, sugar cake and uh, all those good stuff around the time of the year. Oh, okay. But and now, um, uh, could be also someone might be vegan. They could use whatever vegan um, yes. uh, protein that they actually have um, and, to, to and and, and and actually do the same recipe. Yeah, minus the conch because uh, the corn dumpling is very straightforward. Um, it's it, it, like I mentioned, there's right. no no well butter. Uh, you don't have to use the butter. You just have to use the oil, and then you just you know the cactus salsa mm -hmm. was you know, just the cactus, the tomato. So. And maybe you can get some tofu, do the same and chew it, and, uh, and then after you top it with the caca salsa, and um, yeah, there you go. Minus the conk, a little bit of tofu, it's the same way. Oh my God. That definitely looks, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of not wanting to look at that for how awesome it, it looks, and I know it tastes good too. Um, and how, much, how, many, uh, how many of those would be in a serving? I'm trying to gauge the size. Is that like, is that this a This is a full serving, yes. We can only have one of those yeah. during. <laughs> I'm trying to get the size of yeah. it. And this will be the lunch special next week um, at the what beach here at Curtin. I have to do it as a oh lunch, lunch special so that all management and guests can try it, you know, something from back home. So we're doing wow. it next week as a special. Yes. Oh, for lunch. Fantastic. Be sure to come over. <laughs> since we have yeah, you you're so about kind. About, tell us a little bit about Curtin Bluff since we have you um, talking about Curtin Bluff. Uh, well, uh, uh, Curtin Bluff is um, family owned. Um, we have a very loved owner, Michelle Halford, our managing director, Robert Sherman. And they too, I mean, this property has been around for over 50 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, you're we have, right. Um, well, it's on a bluff. I mean, we have one of the best beaches in Antigua, I must say. You know, I'm from Barbados. So when, when a Barbados say um, an Antigua is a good deal, a real nice beach, uh, it's, 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 it's the truth because, you know, mm -hmm. Curtin Bluff sits on a very nice beach. Um, it's a lovely property and it's very personal because the owner, she interacts with the guests every night and she's the last person at night and she's the first person in the morning. I don't know how she does it, but she's an energizer bunny, Miss Shelly Halford. And, and we have, um, we have Dion and, and, and Decade, or are you familiar with those folks? They think you, they, uh, they're asking for a shout, shout out. They say they live across the street from Curtin Bluff and they said, uh, Make sure you give them a shout out. Wow. Oh, sure. Shout out to Dion. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rod, man. Oh, Rod. Oh, Rod and Bobby. It reminds me so much to say, man. The people are so friendly, so nice. Oh, they're the best people. The yeah, best people. Like home, oh, Rod people. The best that's, people. I think that's why I fit in so well. Because it reminds yep. me so much of home. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. Okay. Um, let's see how um, Chef Sean... Uh, over in Belize is doing, and um, yeah, we just heard from Curtin Bluff, of course, it's the English owned, and uh, let's hear what Sean has here on this plate. Yes, so everything's here. Again, the it's amazing because it's, it's, you know, the same dish that made over there, or the, um, the other chef, you know, because like this tamale, for example, it looks similar, you know, which is the corn, corn masa, sorry, used with chicken and an apple. So very similar. It's amazing that both of us, this corn is impressive. And again, you say, all the cardinals have the same hair and same one shred that goes.
goes right down the middle, right? So again, this is the final here. We have the relleno negro, the turkey relleno stuffed with ground pork and egg, corn tortilla. We have the corn atole with rum, like a colada. So I, I, I put some corn uh, coconut cream too. And again, the first toe, the rum, um, and the byproducts of the, this kind of cuisine, you know? Okay. okay. All right. Um, what, what, what is, what's the name of the one in the stone? I, somebody wants to know, get that so, down. So the stone is called, first of all, the stone is called a metate. A metate is a, a the Mayas used to use this to, to make masa. So masa is the finished product. This, you go to eat a taco, you know, you, you eat taco in Mexican uh -huh. It's any tortilla, corn tortilla, this here, this is made from masa. Uh -huh. But to make masa, you have to cook the corn. First, you have to wash the corn. Uh, you have to use white lime. White lime is car bicarbonate of calcium. It comes from a rock. Mm -hmm. In this area, you go down one of the hummingbird, the hummingbird highway, which is the most scenic highway in the country. You will see some kilns of hot, hot ovens that they, they really break down the rock. So this is limestone. So they take this limestone and they cook the corn. So that process is called nishtamalization. So this is corn nishtamal. So you cook the corn and then, you know what it does is it takes off the hull of the corn. So that, you know, the bran and the hull, the white line, with, with, when you cook it in white line, it takes off the hull and the bran, and this is called corn nishtamalization. Now from this, if I take this rock and I start to mash it, mash it, mash it down, you would get what you call masa. And from corn masa, the, 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 the ingredients are endless. Again, we made a drink from corn masa. You have the corn bukuno, you have tamales, you have tortilla. Again, when, when you come to the meat, you have snack, garnaches, you have a turnover called um, panade. So mm -hmm. panade is a corn tortilla with filling like a, like a pot sticker or something like that. And you fill it and you put it inside. Usually you put beans, you put, people like to say they put shark in it. <laughs> but it's delicious. And um, delicious with a little bit of pickled onion, like what you call a like, cabbage onion, you know? Acid, <laughs> acid, good for a bar snack. But the, the, the Maya, the corn is versatile, very, very versatile. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. The, the the corn um the corn looks really good and I like the roast corn that was going on down in Antigua there. Um now Sean, you were able to really take us through a journey of the, the, the cuisine um of Belize and um th this is uh, you know just amazing. Uh I I truly think that um this is uh, 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 an activity or or an event that um, we, we definitely have to, to thank um, the team at uh, TAP and of course um, make sure that we give kudos to, to whom it is due. But um, this is not the, the last episode. This is only the eighth and we're doing 12. Um, but what we learned here today about, the, the, um, the, about Belize cuisine and also um, from a Barbuda standpoint, oh my gosh, Mr. Bisa, um, you know, Chef Bisa was, was amazing. Now, someone said that they actually have a conch shell as a door stopper. And um, we does. know that back in the days of, of good cricket that um, Papi used to blow his conch shell at yes, um, yes. Uh, recreation ground. So it is, a, um, it is definitely an art form in all forms both culinary and also um, artistically. You got to be a really good at, at blowing that kind of shell. So um, <laughs> we, we, we definitely see how, you know, you can use just about anything to, to, to bring the message around. Um, what uh, both of you, I want you to think about a dessert that would go well during this time of year. I know you talked about the rice and the condensed milk, um, Chef Sean. Yes. But which is something that I think I've tasted before because we might have done something similar to that in, in Antigua. But what dessert would come behind of this at the back end to really tap the lips and the taste buds? The number one Christmas dessert, of course, is black fruit cake, just like all the Caribbean. Black fruit of cake. Of course. <laughs> Soaking rum with, with 
molasses. And again, it's the same thing. Speaking of molasses, this is called panela. I glad you brought that question up because this is called panela or rapatura, which is uh, sugar in the raw, like, like permanato almost. This is like molasses too. So yes, we have black fruit cake. Remember, we are British colony too, you know? We yeah. have black fruit cake, we have That's white right. fruit cake. Um, and definitely for Christmas, when you ask me earlier what to smell for Christmas in the house, it's got to be black fruit cake. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, we want to thank Wendy for, for asking some of those questions as well. Um, uh, that's um, also, be, Chef Visa, what would you say would be that good top of? I know, fruitcake, yes. <laughs> I, I remember my mom used to make a, re a real nice bread pudding. I think that was uh, a tradition for us because, you know, we had all these bread and all that sometimes from the festive season. So, should make a real nice bread pudding and there's always been a debate whether with raisins or without raisins just like the um the tukuno, but ours would have raisins raisins inside <laughs> we uh, love okay. our raisins in barbecue. of course well, <laughs> of course yes and i'm happy to hear that because in louisiana bread pudding is a staple but with for me and my family without raisins <laughs> <We're not. laughs> we put the raisins in <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I see someone ask about rum poo poo. Would that, that's okay? Me. Would that be would that be you, um, Sean, is it Chef Sean? Yes, rum poo poo. Uh, okay. Well, what, you, what you call you know, ponte cream or something like that? So it's egg. It's like an eggnog again, but in the Caribbean, rum poo poo. Yeah, condensed milk, uh, evaporated milk, rum, egg. So it's all about <laughs> sweetness. <laughs> Yes, it's sweet. It's a beverage. It's, it's definitely rum popo. It's a Christmas thing. Not a fresh enough neck too, right? Uh -huh. Cinnamon, yeah? Oh. Yeah. Rum popo okay. is definitely a Christmas beverage. Okay, okay. All right, guys, let's have your, your plates. Um, your, your plate, you, you know, you've done your, your plating of your food. Let's have a, a, a picture of these. If we have any more questions, anyone has any more questions or comments? I, um, I have a comment, Joyce. So, sure. Uh, one of um, there was a um, a chat about this as well, and I was just about to comment about it as the person chatted. In terms of uh, Chef Sean, you know, I said we're going to do an Airbnb, we're going to Belize, and Chef Sean will be our chef every day. Guess what? Not only will we get good food, but we're going to get good laughter too because he has <laughs> quite the humor. <laughs> well, you, you're going to be cooking for uh, with a lot of love for a lot of people um, shortly. <laughs> I, I just want to say thank you, you know, and it's just amazing. I've been following the 12 days. Uh, again, this is day eight. I listen to the chef talk about culture. Again, we are showcasing food, and I am limited because I show you one culture, you know. I show you only one thing. <laughs> and, and, oh, you gave us a tour, my dear. We got so much more, and we're not talking about the music. Again, the Conchel, we blow Conchel too. We have Garifuna music, we have Paranga. <laughs> so when you're coming, you have the full package, full package, the full, I want to be, you know, the, the, the part of it because the journey is everything. And again, I just want to say thank you to the Belize Hotel Association for, because it's a, a big production, right? It's not easy. It, it really not was. It's also like this. You know, they make you look good, but we have to thank a lot of people. We have the Belize. Of course. Board, of course. We have Bellikin, of course. We have people run around. Oh man, so much people. Gilbert, Bitmore, Bitmore is the hotel that I'm standing right now. They gave us this nice uh, backdrop here. Wow. The, the chef has already been in the kitchen. As a matter of fact, the chef here has been for his from Antigua. Wow. Oh, we heard about him. We heard wow. about him. Someone. What is his name again? Denfield or something? Yeah, Denfield. Christian Denfield, yeah. Yeah, someone mentioned him in our chat. Yes. Uh, tell First. him to come up so we can see his face. Come on. <laughs> yes, I'm calling him right now. Good. Okay, all the dishes and I got you to wash the dishes right now so he can have it me, right? Yeah, tell him we want to meet him. Bring him out. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm yeah. putting him in a minute. That's, that's yeah. great. That, you, you see how, how the Caribbean is all mixed up and mixed I'm in? I'm telling you, right? Oh, gosh. It's beautiful, but, huh? but listen, this has been an amazing, an amazing um, production. We want to thank you so much, Chef Sean. You brought the business. We heard you were bringing it, and you did not disappoint. 
This was amazing. I feel like I'm in Belize. I feel yeah, that's true. I mm -hmm. want to be on the next plane. And I mean, anyone who missed this episode, they missed a, a culinary journey. I mean, this yeah, is what you, you pay good money for yeah, when you go much. on vacation. So we really appreciate you putting all this effort into this and leaving no stone unturned as far as the culture and all of the fix-ins and um, you're, you're an amazing culinary ambassador for your country. Yes, so I, I know that they, I know that you're well, um, every, everyone I spoke, called your name to, they're like, oh yeah, he's a local celebrity. So clearly, <laughs> clearly, you know, they really, really appreciate what you're doing and, and you, you're getting the recognition that you deserve. For wow. Chef Beezer, I remember Chef Beezer when he was, you know, in, in school in Atlanta. And Chef Beezer, yes. we want to say thank you so much. Yes, Chef yes. Beezer was at, at the Lighthouse Bay and then he went to the BVI and he's traveled and, you know, really, really made Barbuda, well, Antigua and Barbuda. But Barbuda is a small um, community of 1,500 people. So, yeah. you know, when you get a chance to go to college and get to work for one of the top resorts in the world, I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. You have to be the best of the best. Mm -hmm. So we want to yeah, recognize exactly. you as well, Chef Beezer, for your hard efforts, for representing your, your, um, your company well, your destination well, mm -hmm. your village, you know, of Codrington well. Very well, very well. Thank you, thank you, so, thank you for the start. Uh, um, I know I was one of the last ones to come on board, but I was so happy um, when you reached out. You know, uh, this is what, I mean, it's, it's, this is my way of giving back of culinary school from the experience way back home and all that. So it's, it's a great opportunity to give back. And to my owners here, you know, my chef here, I mean, full support, you know, once I told them what I was doing, there was no hesitation, you know what I mean? It was yeah, no, we support. really oh, appreciate it. This is, this awesome. is amazing. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're promoting the destinations and and, and yes, uh, yes. the key part. Of what and we're all the prisoners. <laughs> we're one of the first There you go. There you go. There are lots <laughs> of travel agents. Um, watching and, and it's going to be on our YouTube channel. So don't be surprised if you start getting a lot of guests coming mm -hmm. asking. I'm going to my mask. There you go. There you go. Yep. Yep. Prepared, man. Once you come here, this is how we look. But we yeah. still have the spam underneath. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And to, oh, Joyce, one mask, yeah. and to Joyce, my friend, my former co worker, you did an amazing job. Well, thank you. Um, you know, bringing this to life. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. I have not seen you in so long. It's so good to see you, Lisa. <laughs> so good to see you as well, Doreen. Yeah, and um, thank you for coming on. I know you love the Caribbean. Love I it. Know you are a taste maker. And I know that you, you know, so thanks for sharing um, your perspective on how, how, the, how the foods in Louisiana, you know, how that Creole flavor is um, pretty similar to what we do. Absolutely, it is. So it's always good to get a second perspective, and we always love when we yeah. have guests who come on and um, give their opinions because it's it's feedback like yours from people like you that help us make the um, make the product better. Yes. So um, give our best to Kathy. We met Lisa through Kathy Sledge from Sister Sledge. Yeah, and um, you know. Lisa, did you make the Barbuda trip? I can't even remember. No, I did not make, no, she oh, didn't you didn't get make there. the Barbuda trip. Oh, okay. okay, great. That, but that was some trip, my Lord. <laughs> um, but we've had some good times and uh, it's great to see you. And thanks for your support as well. Yes, so yes. to all of our people like Janet Sinclair, there's some names that you see every day. We want to thank everyone who has taking the time out. This is our second show today. We had a one o'clock, I feel like I worked for Broadway or something. We had a one o'clock show in and now we have a five o'clock show in. And so we're gonna do this again tomorrow. Tomorrow at one, I believe we have Guyana and um, it's Guyana and St. Lucia. And later in the afternoon, Kelly, please help me out. I should have put my gotten my notes together. I believe we have Dominica, Dominica and the Bahamas. Tomorrow afternoon. Oh, that's right. That's Chef, right. Dominica and the Bahamas. Chef Randy hey. and Chef Simone. Um, yes. Simon, sorry, from the Bahamas. 
And at right. one o'clock, we have Chef Edna from St. Lucia and Chef Tamika, sorry. Yes, Edna from St. Lucia and Tamika from Guyana. Well, you, have you noticed, Kelly, that we have not had any male and female chefs going against each other? It's either two males or two females. What's because up with you that? Know, because you know the women will outshine the men. Yeah, we don't want to show them up. That's what it is. I kind of figured. I kind of figured. But I just, I just noticed that. Like, we, like Kelly. But you know what? No, let's take it back. We had one today, a male yeah. and a female. You're That's right. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the I one exception. That. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been an amazing, it's it's an amazing, um, it's been an amazing day of food. Yes. I guess we have no choice but to go and cook right now. I tell you. Yep. All right. So, so thank so you we'll all see. so much. Yep, uh, we'll chef, chef Sean, thank um Adrian and Simone who worked along in getting the testing going. Thank them for us as well. Yes, yes, thank definitely. You. Thank you. They're right here, they're, they're, they're waiting to eat, right? They look at it. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so where, where is Chef Denfield? Come on, tell him, tell him get on camera. He just went to and got, look like he got home. <laughs> oh, he got home, okay. The dialect got home. <laughs> typical, got home but... <laughs> typical Antigua man. I'm glad because then they have no beer for me right there. I didn't see how they did that one drink on my stove. <laughs> wow. That's great. Well, give him our love. Tell him we're yes. hoping to meet him. Hopefully, we'll connect soon. And um, yeah, um, Antiguan, Antiguan people and Caribbean people. We a lot of migration goes on, so they, you know, there's so much mingling, which also helps to spread the culture. As you know, so um, yeah. a lot of a lot of migration happened in the '40s and the '50s, and it's still ongoing. And um, as a result, you know, the the culture continues to spread. And um, even though we have our unique um, dishes and what have you, everything is so similar. I couldn't believe we had two chefs with coal pots today and corn. That was such I a know. coincidence. You know, you guys. Oh, we never talk. Um, and, and, we just... and using corn. Yeah, and using corn. corn. <laughs> yeah, that was very interesting, right? Yeah, but... I already ate the roast pie. It was so delicious. Yeah, we're one Caribbean. We're one Caribbean, and um, it just, it just. Um, gives us all the more reason to work together as different destinations. And that's what we do, Travel Advisors Selling the Caribbean. We want to be the, the Caribbean voice of travel and uh, whatever we can do to bring the Caribbean together, especially at this time, that's our mandate. Yep. So I know every... Can you get the chef's IG, the um, social media handles, please? Yes, can you give us your social media handles once again? I know you did. Oh, already, but... Yeah, go ahead, Roderick. Ro yeah, Roderick Beza, uh, Facebook and Instagram is Roderick.Beza1. Um, and those are the two, face two social media handles that I have. Thank you. Sean, give us your social media handles again, please, before we leave. Instagram is Chef Sean Keenan and Facebook uh -huh. is also the same Chef Sean Keenan. Fantastic. Well, listen. Chefs, you guys have a very Merry Christmas to all of our viewers. We will see you back here again tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then there's an evening show at 5 o'clock. It's 12 days and we are getting closer to the end. Um, it's, it, it's going great. And I hope, hope you guys are enjoying it and learning more about the cuisine of the Caribbean. Have a nice evening, everyone, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Chefs, have a great Christmas. Thank you, Thank you Thanks, Thank Kelly. You Thanks, 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 Nadine. Thank you, guys. Thank team you, team. Thank you. Team Thank you so much.